It's 4 4 p.m. and we arrive in Saint Maxime. Saint Maxime is a beautiful city on the French Riviera located on the seafront. It's known for its long sandy beaches, its charming port, and its famous Simon Laurier promenade, which is very pleasant. A small shop attracts our attention, and we stop for a moment to eat some churros. Monumental works are usually exhibited from June until the end of the season. Thus, we cross many giant padlocks. The artist Chinikov created them, inspired by the worldwide phenomenon of love locks. The old town center of Saint Maxime is very cute and relatively small, but there are many shops, bars, and restaurants. Saint Maxime is a very popular destination for tourists who appreciate the charm of its shopping streets, the beauty of its landscapes, the attractiveness of its many beaches, and the quality of its turquoise water. It's 5.9 p.m. and we arrived at Port Grimaud. It's a lakeside town located in the Gulf of Saint-Tropez. It's a village which is worth the detour when you are in the surroundings. The Venice of Provence, as Port Grimaud is called, in the 1960s by François Perry, an architect from Mulhouse. The city is only accessible by boat or on foot. To get to Port Grimaud, you have to leave your car in one of the parking lots outside the port and enter the town through the security gate, which is guarded. When an architect arrived in the area, he noticed that the land located in the commune of Grimaud, between Saint-Maxime and Saint-Tropez, was marshy. He then decided to create a lake city. The construction of Port Grimaud was completed in the 2000s at a rate of 100 houses built per year. They were worth 70,000 euros in the 70s and are now worth almost a million. Each house has its own small dock to park its boat. In Port Grimaud, it's much easier to get around by boat than by car. The village is really very nice. It's particularly calm and peaceful. Not to be missed, the Church of Saint-François d'Assise and its view. This church is open to the public and the access to the roof costs one euro. It allows to have a panoramic view on Port Grimaud but also on Saint-Maxime and Saint-Tropez after having climbed its 1960 steps. For the record, before the Second World War, François Perry sailed on the Mediterranean Sea on his boat Le Colibri. Italy, Cyclades, Greece, he sailed and discovered many ports. These inspired his imagination and gave birth to a dream. One day, in 1962, during a family lunch, he expressed the wish to find a place where he could moor his boat near his house. Then, his uncle told him about a real estate agent friend who had told him that a piece of land for sale was the paria of his list. An unattractive property waiting for a buyer for seven years. At 4 p.m. the same day, the father of Port Grimaud signed the sales agreement, which gave him the enjoyment of the first 30 hectares of the future Lakeside City, which represents 90 hectares today. After having taken a little climb, we go back down and continue our walk in the village and make a small detour by the port, which is located just behind the church. There are thousands of reasons to love the little Venice of Provence. Strolling along the canals, taking a boat, and observing the colors of the city.
at 6.43 p.m. and we arrive in Saint-Tropez. This village, in the south of France, a favorite destination of the jet set and celebrities, was made world famous by the late 1950s by the actress Brigitte Bardot. Since then, tourists flock to the seaside resort every summer to discover its typical village and its beautiful sandy beaches. The port of Saint-Tropez is the emblematic place of the city, and it is here that we begin our visit. Before tourism invaded the village, it was a small fishing and trading port that allowed the export of local goods. Today, luxury yachts and sailing boats have largely replaced the small fishing boats. It has become the marina of the French Riviera. The port is lined with typical provincial houses with oak facade as well as numerous restaurants and cafes. One of these emblematic establishments is the Senequier Café installed in the port since 1930. In the summer, the port of Saint-Tropez welcomes a crowd of tourists who come to admire the yacht in search of possible stars for which it's a place to be seen. To protect themselves from invasions, the people of Saint-Tropez built four towers that encircle the bay. The Portalet Tower, the Jarlier Tower, the Vieille Tower and the Suffren Tower. The towers of Portalet and Vieille date from the 15th century. They were used to monitor attacks from the sea. Today, they offer a beautiful panorama of the ports of Saint-Tropez and the village. They protected the port and the entrance to the village before the Jarlier Tower was built. The Jarlier Tower, completed a century later in 1569, was integrated into the plan of the village to make it a fortified city and is today a place for prestigious events. The Suffren Tower is the oldest building in the city dating from the 11th century. We are now arriving in the Ponge district, which is the oldest in Saint-Tropez and is located just below the citadel. It was a fisherman and craftsman district. Strolling through the Ponge district is one of the main things to do in Saint-Tropez. It's a set of small streets and coves where buildings with ochre, pink and orange walls are concentrated. We can also see the red and yellow bell tower of Notre-Dame de l'Assomption Church, which is the emblem of Saint-Tropez. Popular at the end of the 19th century, thanks to Guy de Maupassant and then Paul Signac, this neighborhood became a meeting place for 20th century writers and artists. Far from the hustle and bustle of the port, this area is appreciated for its calm and its ancient look. Saint-Tropez is of course synonym of luxury stores. Thus, heading towards the Place des Lys, we discover brands like Rolex, Dior, Valentino, Bulgari, Dolce Gabbana and many others. Arrived at the Place des Lys, we discover here the local life of Saint-Tropez with its café, its provincial market and its borders and the trees. Like every village in the south of France, Saint-Tropez has its own provincial market set up in the square on Tuesday and Saturday mornings. There are fruits and vegetables, but also cheesemakers, many clothes sellers, second-hand goods and handicraft. Almost as famous as the Church of Notre-Dame de l'Assomption, the Gendarmerie of Saint-Tropez became famous by the film of Louis de Funès, Le Gendarme de Saint-Tropez. The old Gendarmerie, which housed the Saint-Tropez Brigade from 1879 to 2003, has been transformed into the Musée de la Gendarmerie et du Cinéma de Saint-Tropez. It traces the history of the building and the representation of the gendarmes in the movies. Overlooking the village on its hill, the citadel of Saint-Tropez was built between 1602 and 1608 to protect itself from barbarian attacks. Today, it houses the Maritime History Museum, which recounts the saga of the sailors of Saint-Tropez who sailed the world seas. The citadel is easily accessible on foot from the village. At the foot of its ramparts, you can enjoy a magnificent panorama of the village 
and the entire Gulf of Saint-Tropez. Coming to Saint-Tropez is also to enjoy the beaches. Some of the most beautiful beaches of the French Riviera can be found here. The most famous are located in the Crescent Moon, to the east of the peninsula and north of Cape Camara. We can mention the beach of Tahiti and especially the beach of Pampelon. The 7 kilometers of fine sand alternates between public and private beaches. This is where you will find some of the most chic establishments in Saint-Tropez, such as the Nikki Beach. And after this busy day, we end our day on the beach. Until then, it's pushing